Uh, attendance, who knows? We'll see. Probably not. <clears throat> no. All right, so find the volume of the solid that results when rotating. The area of the region bounded by, and let's see, our two curves are going to be y equals x squared and y equals 4x um, about the following lines. Yeah, we're going to do a couple of scenarios. Okay, so the first scenario we'll look at is um, we're going to rotate around the line y equals negative 2. So that's going to be our axis of rotation is the, is the um, line y equals negative 2. <coughs> All right. So this one we don't need our graphing calculators for. So let's go ahead and try and go ahead and just sketch this region. Okay? Take two, take a minute, not two minutes, take two minutes, take a minute, take a minute, sketch the region. If you take two minutes, it's too long. All right, but seriously, sketch the region here. So go ahead, take, take a little time, sketch this region in your mind, on your paper, okay? Don't use your graphing calculator, though, just do it. This one we should be able to do no problemo. So it should look something like that, except without, hopefully, you guys didn't draw into your directions like I did because I drew mine too small. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, I drew mine like way too I big. drew the line y equals negative 2. Okay, that's not a problem. Okay. Stupid. So at what point do these two things actually intersect here? Yeah, so 0, 0, and then 2, 8. So again, we can also... <coughs> um, eh, it shouldn't be 2, no, 8. Be two, so let's see here. So let's set them equal, right? We can figure out where they're equal when we set the two curves equal to each other. So x squared equals 4x. Subtract the 4x over. Okay, factor here. So it's x minus... Uh, 4 times x. And so x is 0. Well, clearly we see that it can be equal to 0. But also x at 4. Their same it's 4. So it would be like 4, 6. So I'm, my curve here is not that great. It's going to be actually way further out there. But you get the idea, though, at least. So. Okay. So the point here where they intersect, and maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I'll just draw a better sketch here. It's going to look something like this, basically. Okay, and this point, like we said, is going to be 4, 16, and that's 0, 0. That's more helpful, maybe. Okay, so there's our region. <coughs> okay, this is nice because it's just got two boundaries, right? It's the two curves, so it says that space between them. All right. So... Let's kind of orient ourselves. We are rotating about the line y goes negative 2, so it might not be a bad idea to draw that line. So here's negative 1, negative 2, I'll eyeball to be like right about there, I guess. So something like that. There's our axis of rotation. And so we're going to rotate about it like that. Okay. So since we have a horizontal axis of rotation, Anna, that means you're going to integrate with respect to what variable? Uh, X. X. Very good. Horizontal axis of rotation. Are you going to respect to x? Okay. Oh, there it is. All right. 
So, Anna, what are our limits of integration going to be? Actually, go ahead. Sorry, let me, let, me, let me back up a little bit here. So it's going to be volume equals what? Uh, pi. pi times the integral from what to what? Zero to from 0 to 4. Perfect. Okay, good job. Anna, is this going to be the washer method or is this going to be the disk? Are we going to use disks here? Do, we need, do I need to have, like, do we have two radiuses or we just have one radius? Just one radius? So let's see here. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And how can you tell that? Like what tells you that there's just one radius there? <coughs> Again, here's our center. How do you know we just have one radius there? We don't know. Okay. So <coughs> if you look here, right, there's our center of revolution. So our, cent our, solid, our, our area is going to rotate around this. Okay, so it's going to look something, you know, if I, like, were able to sketch this with any sort of... Would there not be a hole? Or would there be a hole? Okay, so you can see it's going to rotate. Like that. Okay, so there is going to be a hole in here. So actually, we do want to use the, the washer method here, Anna. Do you see that? There's space. There's a, there's a, it's hollow in the center. So we need, we need to use the washer method here. So it's going to be a big radius squared and a little radius squared. Okay. So that being said, what is our big radius here? Let's go to Tyler. So from our center of rotation, which curve is the furthest away? Um, X squared. X squared. How did you determine that? Actually, no. Okay. How did you determine that? No, you actually are on the right path there. What, what could you do? Plug in 1, right? Let's just try 1. Okay, if I plug in x equals 1, 4 times 1 is bigger than 1 squared, right? So the, the straight line's on top. Absolutely, yeah, okay. So am I just going to write in 4x and then square that quantity? And you're close by the right, am I going to just square it, though? 4x is the height off of the axis. But I need to add 2. But instead, I'm going to say, instead of like saying plus 2, I'm going to subtract negative 2. Still the same thing, right? Minus negative 2 is still plus 2. But this kind of follows in that whole vein of when you have a different axis besides the x-axis and the y-axis that you're rotating around, you want to do curve minus axis. And in fact, if you always do curve minus axis, that won't, that won't be a problem because if it's the x-axis or y-axis, you're just going to subtract zero, so it won't change it anyway, okay? So really, if you want to do it just every time you see a washer or a disk method, just do curve minus axis, quantity squared, and you'll be fine, okay? So we have to account for the fact there that we've got this, this, this height off the axis, or the, the axis is two units further away from that x-axis there, okay? So just always do curve minus axis or axis minus curve. It doesn't matter which one you do. So you, you just easily here could have written negative 2 minus 4x quantity squared and still be fine. So yeah. on the AP test, when it's asking us to set up the integral for something like this, <coughs> is it going to want to see minus the axis? Or if we wrote 4x plus 2, because I'm sure I'm going to That's fine. Credit. You're fine. Because you simplified it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Simple simplification like that. That's fine. Yeah, Donovan? Yeah, that's fine too. Yeah, but that's a, that's a like more mathematical way to like really convince yourself what Tyler was doing there. It's much more analytical. But yeah, if you just see, okay, that clearly it's a line. It's on top, and it's a problem on that spot too. Okay, we, are we all comfortable with where this came from? Because this is tricky. Okay, when you have that axis, you have to worry about. But again, if you just do every single one of these problems, if you just do curve minus axis, even if the axis is the x-axis, you just subtract zero. That won't change it. Okay, <clears throat> um, that'll give you the right answer. Okay, so that's our big radius. Okay, we're going to subtract then our little radius. All right, so what's that going to be? Let's go to Ryan. So how we set this one up then, Ryan? Uh, parentheses. Mm -hmm. X squared. X squared. Minus negative two. Minus negative two. Quantity squared. Exactly right. Dx. Okay, so there's our setup. <coughs> okay. Curve minus axis or axis minus curve, it doesn't matter. Bless you. But it's always big radius minus little radius, though. So that order does matter. You always want to do the bigger radius, the one that's further away from the center of rotation, minus the one that's closer to the center of rotation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, what did you change your answer if you did the second one, integral inter inter that one to the pi? If you integrated that one from what to what? From, from like pi to equal to 4. 
Yeah, well, you can split it up over subtraction so that it wouldn't change the answer. You can separate them. You can integrate them separately. Yes, if you want to and subtract. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So there's the setup. And so we'll go ahead and um, try this here. So I'm going to type in uh, x to the second and 4x into my calculator here, into the y1 and y2. Okay. And I'm going to do var, oh sorry, not vars, sorry, math 9. Oh, I've got the pretty type 1 here, so that's, that's handy. Trini, did you get um, batteries for your calculator? Nope. All right, so here, I'll get you a calculator. You're going to have to use my outline because I've already got it. problems of two when you, if you want to look at it there. You're welcome. Okay, so we're going to go from zero to four. All right, and I put four x in my y2, so it'll be vars, y vars, function, y2, minus negative two. I'm going to square that quantity, so I've got to put parentheses around it still. Okay, so y2 minus negative two squared, okay, minus parentheses, vars, y vars, function, y1, <coughs> minus negative 2, quantity squared, with respect to x, and there it is, 562.973. This is like a lot. Well, yeah, the region's pretty big, actually. I mean, I didn't draw it very big here, but you're going from 416 there, so I mean, yep. Axis of rotation. You would change it to be in terms of y, which means your limits of integration would change, and then your curves, how they look, they would change, right? Because it would not be 4x, it would be 1 fourth y, and this curve would then be like the square root of y. So actually, like, a lot of things would change if you change it. And in fact, I think we're going to see, yep, um, in, in the next, not the next one, but the one after the next one, we'll see a, a vertical axis rotation. So, if, so what if the problem, like, they trying to think of how to work this. So there was only like a difference of negative two between the end of the region and the axis we were turning it around. Because the end of the region we were sketching is on the origin. Right. What if it was off the origin, like higher and the We're doing right now. Y equals sixteen. Okay. We're gonna do that right now. So you'll see. You'll see what happens, okay? Okay, so now we're changing up subtly the, diff the, cha the problem here. We're now going to have a vertical, sorry, horizontal line y equals 16. So our, our region is still the same. Okay, it's still going to have like the line and then like the curve here. Okay, and they're still going to intersect at 4, 16 and down here at 0, 0. Okay, but now y equals 16 is our axis of revolution, so we're going to be rotating okay, over a <coughs> horizontal line that goes right through the tip of that region there. Okay, and we're going to rotate around it. So now, would you expect the volume to be greater or less than the one we just found? Less. We're going to rotate the same region, but I think there should be a difference here. And so, okay, so why do we say less here? Emma? Because it's below the axis. So you're, you're, you're saying this is going to be less than this one. Which one? You're not sure now? Okay. That's why I'm just killer. Ryan, what do you say? It's going to be less because... This one's going to be less. Yeah. Less when you rotate. The second one we're doing okay. is going to be less. Okay, because, because... We're rotating it around like a... We're not rotating it as far because it's closer to the area. Like... Okay, I see what you're saying. So yeah. let me let me uh, let me just repeat it, just to kind of hear what you're saying. So our region here that we're rotating, the axis is closer to the region. So our rotation is going to be kind of tighter. It's yeah. like closer like, to the region. Like whereas like here it was more spread out, and so it's going to take yeah. more, make create like, more volume. Like on like a track, like mm -hmm. the outside lanes are longer than the inside. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So we just flip it. What's that? So we just flip it and do it that way. Like flip the because we can't rotate. <coughs> 
<coughs> like we can't uh, rotate that solid, right? The way it's oriented. We can absolutely okay. we can we can actually, and I'll show you. I'll show you. It's actually very easy, very straightforward. The 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 changes here. So the volume for this, okay. Well, we're going to start out with what? Volume equals pi. pi. Don't forget that pi in front. Don't forget that pi in front. You will you will you'll kick yourself if you do. Okay. All right. A little bit. You'll be like, ah, oh, I can't believe I did it. Uh, we'll get to that. Hang on. Um, so, Brandon, what are our limits of integration going to be? Zero to four still. We're still integrating with respect to x. So we're still going to use our x limits of integration there. So those did not change. Oh. oh. Okay. And so, right. So, Brandon, is this a washer method or a disk method? Still washer. Why? Because if you look here, here's our axis of rotation. There's still space between our region and the axis. So it's going to be a hollow, it's going to be hollow, right? So basically, if you can tell the shape's going to be hollow, it's going to be washer. Okay, great. So what's our, since you said that then, what's our big radius? What's the curve that's furthest from our axis here? So you notice, yes, notice what's changed now. So one thing, because our axis rotation went from below our region to above it, okay, our radius is switched. The when the radius, when the axis was below, the straight line was further, the curve x squared was closer. Now it's flip-flopped, the curve x squared is further, the line is closer. So the big curve now is going to be, yeah, x squared, but because we have an axis, curve x squared minus the axis of 16. That's essentially the same as flipping it over the axis and then doing it that Kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Quantity squared, okay, minus... And then let's go to Emma. What would this, what would the little radius be? It will be what, what are we going to square here? Okay, so 4x, is that it? No. Minus 16, yep. Or 16 minus 4x, either way. Yep, curve minus axis, curve minus axis. And there's your setup. Okay, the big radius was x squared minus the cur axis of 16. And then the, a little radius was 4x minus the axis of 16. Okay, that's the setup. And so again, we can put that into our calculators. So let's see, now I'm going to do vars, y vars function. I'm going to do y1 minus 16 <laughs> minus vars, y vars function, y2 minus 16, quantity squared, dx. And we get 643. Ooh. Yeah, because, Interesting. because it's concave. It's concavity. It might be, yeah, it might be the concavity then. And uh, honestly, I had no idea what the answer was going to be. I thought you were going to be right there, Ryan. So, I mean... I, I, after I answered you, I realized that the concavity changed. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it could be, yes. I think it's because it's, it's, it's concave out. And so that, as a result, it ended up with it being more there. Which is interesting, still. Because I would have thought what you said would have been more significant yeah. that it was because it was further away. Yeah. But it's not. The concavity was more effective, more significant there. Okay? What's the matter? Okay, so you are you probably typed something in correctly, incorrectly into the thing there. So I'll come take a look at it here real quick. Yep. How did the region get there? I think it has to do with the fact that because it's like bowed out here because with the concavity with this rotation, so we're this this like bigger region right here is getting rotated a further distance than it was here because it was closer to the axis of rotation and so it results in a larger volume. Which again, you know, in my mind I thought Ryan's argument was, was valid, but I think in this case it actually was, was so the opposite. No, not opposite. I mean it worked this 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 bowing out here was more significant because it was rotating further than it being further away from the axis in the first place. So yeah. Yeah. Would be Rotating about zero, I would imagine your volume would be different. Yeah, different. So you think that would and I think it would be a smaller than this one so because this big region is now closer to your axis. The more a curve is like more concave, it is, the more it matters for the more I guess, area you like have to on point. Yes. Yes. Again, because you're rotating. Once you rotate around, that creates a larger volume accumulation as you rotate. So, yeah. So, this is just the one thing that makes sense to me. Okay. The, the four x graph. Say we change that to 
something that would make it concave. Basically, so our, our shape we were doing was symmetrical. You see what I'm saying? Like it's not it's symmetric. I didn't draw it. Well, I know, but well. say we changed it. Like, hypothetically, okay. if 4x was something that made the shape symmetrical. Okay, gotcha. On either side. Gotcha. Uh -huh. Shouldn't it be the same if our axis of rotation was at 16 and 0? Because, like, since it's symmetrical, it would Potentially, make yes, then, yes, yes. But I don't see how that would work if we subtract 16 and then do the exact same thing except subtract 0. Because wouldn't the 16th cancel or something like that? Well, something like that. Well, actually, it might not be the same then. I can't say. But. But let's. I, that's not a question we need to worry about right yeah. now. So I want to kind of move on because I'm losing the rest of the class here. Everyone's like, I don't care. So, but I, I, I care. So we can talk about that later. Then we can, we can look at that. Okay, we can try to figure something out. Um, all right, letter C. X equals negative two. Okay, now we've got our new axis of rotation here. It's the axis of rotation X equals negative two. So again, we're going to resketch the curve. Okay, we're being, we're getting very familiar now with this kind of deal. Okay. And then I'll say y equals negative 2 is here, even though it's not really quite drawn to scale. But Okay, so we're going to rotate this way. So, sorry, x equals negative 2. Okay, so x equals negative 2, vertical axis of rotation now. Vertical axis of rotation. So as a result, since we have a vertical axis of rotation, Trinity, with respect to what variable are we going to integrate here? Um, so you don't have to give me the you don't have to give me the limits of integration. I'm just saying with with respect to what variable. Here we had horizontal axis of rotation. Horizontal axis of rotation. We integrate with respect to x. Um, so now we're going to integrate with respect to what? Why? Yeah. So our volume then is going to be, what should I, and what should I start writing, Trinity? Volume equals what? Um, pi. pi times integral. And so, yeah, so what are our limits of integration going to be? If we're with respect to y, what should our limits of integration be now? Um, um, yeah, exactly right. We're going to use the y coordinates now, 0 to 16. From the bottom to the top, that was me. It's my computer's <laughs> dying here. Okay. Good. Now, the next question, Trinity, what's the furthest curve here from our axis of rotation? What's our big range? What's our furthest curve? Uh, yeah, the x squared. But of course, x squared is not useful to us because that's in terms of x. We need to get in terms of y because you just said we need our um, we need our um, in integral to be in terms of y. So if if y equals x squared is our curve in terms of x. What do I do here to get this in terms of y? <coughs> yeah, yeah, just square root both sides, right? So x equals the square root of y. Now, really, technically here, I should have a plus or minus, but because we're on the right side of the axis here, we need positive x values, so we're just going to keep the positive square root of y. So, yep. <coughs> so the big radius is square root of y. <coughs> but what do we have to do? Square root of y minus negative 2. We have a different axis. We have an axis other than the y-axis here. So it's curved minus axis. Okay, quantity squared. And now we can square it. <coughs> okay. Minus little radius. And we'll go, we'll, we'll stop dogging Trinity here and we'll go to somebody else. Chanda! All right, Chanda, what's the little radius going to be? Okay, good. So, yeah, y equals 4x. So, yeah. x is equal to y over 4. I'm going to make it 1 fourth y, but that's fine. Y over 4 is good. And so, we're going to put in parentheses here what? Oh, sorry, I'm off the camera. There we go. So, what am I going to put here for my little radius then? Very good. Minus negative 2 because we have that, other, that axis other than 
the x or y axis in this case. And there's our setup. 0 to 16, okay, y coordinates. Y, you know, curve with respect to y in terms of y, so it's square root of y minus the axis, negative 2, minus the little radius, 1 fourth y minus the negative 2 squared dy. Okay, lots of information packed into that little problem right there, but there it is. And of course, you can use our calculators and then do this. So let's see here, math 9. So oh, I should put a pi in front here. I forgot to put a pi. So I can insert pi. Okay, there we go. 0 to 16. And it'll be the square root of y. I'm going to use x's though, that's fine. Minus 0 0.25 <coughs> y minus negative 2 squared <coughs> with respect to x. Chug, 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 chug. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, I know, right? 268. Point zero eight three, we'll say. <coughs> it looks like it's probably should be three, 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 and then. So yeah, two fifty six over third. Two fifty six. What's that? You can multiply by pi afterwards if you want. <coughs> That's fine. Okay. Questions on that? We're all good. I got one more here for you guys, and I'm going to have you guys try this one on your own. So the training wheels are off. It's time to ride your bike on your own, and hopefully you don't skin your knees, okay? So here we go. <laughs> Mom, you daddy, you X equals go. 6. You go ahead and do this one. It's your turn now. Okay, set it up. Because that, that's really the work, is setting it up, right? Sure. <clears throat> Yes. Are there any problems when uh, say the the x axis the axis being x equals two? So sorry, say it one more time. Are there any problems like say it was x equals two, like it's right down the middle? We wouldn't do a problem like that. Because okay. you're right, yeah. Because well, how would you? Yeah, no, we couldn't really do that. And that would be um, maybe we could do that. I don't know. But then you'd have like volume on top of volume too, potentially. I think. Well, you'd have like volume overlapping other you're things that are already you're getting a problem you know what I mean like so yeah we would it would always be outside the region it should always be outside the region your axis of revolution oh, wait what Yes. Yep. Just again, the reason why it was minus negative two in the previous one because it was negative two. Yep. So we know the curve defined as y equals four x. We need it in terms of y though. So we just solve for x in terms of y. So divide both sides by four. <coughs> it's processing, probably lots of calculation, little calculations, because I think it actually, like, you know how we say we're adding up an infinite number of rectangles when we integrate? Well, actually, the calculator can't add up an infinite number of things because it would be stalling forever. So instead, it it is um, giving, it's probably doing maybe a thousand or ten thousand of those rectangle calculations, which, you know, to us, are maybe even more than that, depending on, because you can, like, also, I think there's, like, ways to calculate the error too so you know it's like the calculator can only display let's say 10 decimal places so it does enough rectangles that its error is 
outside of that 10 decimal places. So it gives us the value, the pre you know, the precise value, but past that, you know, kind of thing. I imagine something like that. So then, Mr. Yeah. So, like so what I'm saying, uh, uh, right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that might be doing that many. Now. I don't know how many it would take. I was just, you know. <coughs> right, exactly. That's right. So. It's like, um, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Louis C.K. He, he went on uh, like uh, Conan O'Brien one time or something like that, and he was like, talking about, doing a bit, I guess, from his show or whatever, he talks about how people, like, get so upset with their cell phones, like, when something doesn't send. He's like, yeah. relax, it's going up to space and then back down to someone else, you know? Yeah. It's like, come on, you know? I mean... That's, that's in one of his comics. Though. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, that's clever. I don't think it goes up to space, though. It goes to a cell tower. But still, you know, it's like doing yeah. some pretty impressive things. <laughs> he was, like, getting directions or something like that. Yeah. In his, um, in his, like, yeah, GPS. Special, yeah. Talking, he was, like, he was like, if you're complaining, I want you to go out and make, like, make a tower and make a cell phone and make it work. Right. Out of nothing. Right, exactly. You get nothing. Yeah. yeah. There's no way you know an exact number of It's just we accept a percent of, I guess. I, well, calculation wise, yes. Yeah. But we can, you know, like I said, when we do it by hand, we're doing it precisely. Yeah. So, but like the numeric calculation, when the calculator does it, obviously you can't do. So. So but like the calculus we do has been proved, and that's yeah. why we don't need to worry about error. It's like it's exact. <coughs> so, um. anywho, there's your setup. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now again, you don't have to do curve minus axis. If you like, you can do axis or axis minus curve. So you could easily here have two minus one fourth y and two minus root y there. That's fine. It's gonna be the same answer. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Six. I oh, know I did two because it was standing two there. Sorry. Sorry. That's six. Okay, questions on any of that? What's the answer? Minus 6 because the curve is axis. Axis is 6. So it's curve minus axis. Okay. All right, let's take a look at another one here. I think I've got... Yeah. Okay, so here's like a free response-ish style question. We're not quite there. We're almost done. Uh, okay, let R be the region in the first quadrant. Shown in the figure below. And I'll sketch it out here for you, roughly. Do we need a sketch? Uh, it's up to you. Can I keep this top of that hand? Uh, you can keep it. He's drunk. <laughs> and that's on that's on YouTube. <laughs> hey, Miss Franklin. Guess what one of my students said on <laughs> camera. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. All right, so. I want you to first find the area of R. So go ahead and set up that integral. Just find the area, area of region R. Area. Right, I was like, <coughs> I've only been doing volume for the past two days. How do I do area? Three days, maybe? Well, but I mean... <laughs> Okay. 
Okay. Set up an, an integral for the area of region R. <coughs> disk method. Do we need to use disk method here? What is disk method used for? Area of volume. What do you think? What is it? What do we? What do we use the disk method for? Do we use it for area? What's that? So we're not rotating this region, are we? So it's oh, not it's not disks or washers. Okay. Not disks or washers. <coughs> yeah, you may use a calculator. I don't think it is. And we have to this yeah, it's, it's sorry. It's not intersecting at one. I know it looks like it does. It's it is not intersecting at one. Not one. No. You should use your graph calculator to help you. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not. It intersects like root here. Use your calculator to help you. Because actually, you can't solve this by hand. <coughs> you have to approximate here. So yeah. So again, set up the integral here. So Connor, what are you thinking here? So area equals. Do we need a pi here? No. Why not? Right. Okay. So that's first huge thing right here. Right. No pi in front of this interval because it's just an area. Okay. We do the pi in front for a rotation of for a solid revolution, but here's no pi. So integral from. Okay. So we're going to integrate with respect to what variable here? Yeah. Well, so we're going to integrate respect to what variable? Answer that question. <coughs> x or y? Respect to x. Yeah, respect to x here. Yes, absolutely. We could do it with respect to y. It's going to be a little bit funky if we do it that way. So really, x is the best one. Right, exactly right. And we would also have two different, we have to write two different integrals because from here to this point, roughly, the top curve is this, but then from up here, from here up, it's going to be the top curve is that, or the rightmost curve, I should say, is that. So <coughs> we don't want to use y here. We'll use x. <coughs> so the integral is from, what's our lower limit of integration? Zero to, yeah, so it's like a, 1.058? Okay. So it's qu close to one, but not quite one. All right, and what goes in our integrand here, Connor? I was going to say 4 minus x squared. 4 minus x squared, the quantity, yep. Yeah. And then subtract minus e to the x. Yep, the quantity e to the x, dx. There's our setup. <coughs> okay. Now... I'm going to skip on here because I want us to try and get one more in here. Um, this is something you really want to make sure you are able to type in accurately for your calculator, though, too. Okay, you need to be able to type this in to your calculator accurately. So, what's that? Oh, for the value, yeah, I'll get you that here. One second, let me do that. Mm. <coughs> One point nine five seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, is what you should have gotten there. Okay. <coughs> All right, let's try another one. Find the volume, aha, volume yeah. of the solid 
uh, generated when R is rotated around the x-axis. So find this volume of the solid generated when R is rotated around the x-axis. So around the x-axis. <coughs> oh, sorry, I went off the screen. Okay, so let's do this one together, just for the interest of time. Unless you guys want to jump ahead of me, that's fine. I'm going to call on someone, though, here. <coughs> so, Nate, the x-axis, that's a horizontal <coughs> axis of revolution here. So we're going to integrate with respect to y or integrate with respect to x. x, very good. So it's going to be volume equals pi, pi good, <coughs> times the integral from what to what. <coughs> Yep, so respect to x, so... Zero, two, two. Not two, but well, it's the same limits of integration as we got here. It's 1.058. Okay? Now... Oh, that's one, I see. Yeah, and so we're rotating around the x-axis. So you can see here we have some space between there, so it's going to be a wash mess. We have a big radius and a little radius, right? What's our Everybody. big radius curve? Four minus x squared. Correct. Do we need to subtract anything from that, though? No, yeah, it's on the axis. You can put minus zero if you want to. You can just do curve, four minus x squared, minus axis, zero. But we're just going to leave it four minus x squared because that's what it is. So good, squared minus, what's the little radius? <coughs> e to the x. Which one? So, no, because letter A, we're just finding the area. So it's just top curve minus bottom curve for the area. You don't square that, okay? We square this because it's radius squared for the volume. And yep, there's the answer. And let's see here. As a integral, 0 to 1.058, uh, I get about 32.6. Two nine there. Okay. All right. We'll pause there. I have one more. We have one more little topic to cover, and then we'll be covered. We'll have everything done. Okay.